Warning, there are offensive words in this podcast. Also, defensive words. This week's episode of The Scathing Atheist is brought to you by the new dating service for horrible people that want to date even worse people so they won't seem as bad in comparison to Quoque Cupid. To Quoque Cupid, because right-wing dating sites might as well stop beating around the bush. And now, The Scathing Atheist. Hi, my name was Robert, and instead of coming out as transgender like a normal person... I've decided it was better to let you all know that we did, in fact, evolve from filthy monkey men. Some of whom are actually filthy monkey women. It's June 22nd. And it's stupid guy thing day. Okay, doing a podcast? Check. Yeah, we nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> no illusions. I'm Elon Bosnick. I'm Heath Enright. And from Vinny Bag of Donuts, New Jersey, and over hey. Michigan and Waycross, Georgia, this is The Scathing Atheist. On this week's episode, a taco hut sees if they can make a little Spanish Inquisition work. <laughs> Catholics grapple with the blood of Christ being a GMO, technically. <laughs> and Ray Comfort will let us know if black lives really matter. He will. But first, the diatribe. Don't get me wrong, I get it. Nothing feels better than looking at those three nerd-ass geniuses on Jeopardy and getting a chance to go, psh, dumbasses. And when I first saw that three entire Jeopardy contestants managed to simultaneously miss the clue, Matthew 6, 9 says, Our Father which art in heaven, this be thy name. It was my first reaction, too. Because I enjoy the rare moments when I'm temporarily smarter than even the dumbest Jeopardy contestant. But upon reflection, I feel like derision is the wrong response. So th this infraction came last Tuesday in an obvious nod to Father's Day. The category was dadjectives. So every answer was an adjective and every clue had something about a father in it. And this is the $200 question. This is double jeopardy at this point. So that's the easiest clue. And it's the blank be thy name one, right? All three contestants completely spaced on it. Nobody even rang in. They didn't even try. They just stared dumbly forward until the time ran out. And that anti-vaxxer they replaced Alex Trebek with chimed in with the correct answer, which is, of course, hallowed. Or, or I'm sorry, I'm sorry, what is hallowed? And, and predictably, the Internet's response was indignant. How dare all these supposedly smart people not know the opening line of the most common prayer in all of Christianity? How dare this not be basic knowledge that every reasonably educated person commands? And it wasn't just Twitter. A quick Google reveals headlines from major media sources like NBC News's Jeopardy fans reel at Lord's Prayer question going unanswered. Fox News's Jeopardy fans stunned by Lord's Prayer questions. And the New York Post's Jeopardy contestants fail to answer Bible clue about our father. This is a fucking major media event, apparently. And like I said, I, I do get it. I knew the answer, right? I'm, I'm not sure I would have known the answer under pressure in front of a live studio audience, mind you. Anybody who's done a trivia night knows that there's nothing so simple that you can't completely blank on it when you're on the spot. But I'm still kind of surprised that nobody got this one. That being said, I'm not stunned. I'm not reeling. I mean, two of the three contestants had negative dollars on the board halfway through the game, so they probably were second-guessing themselves on everything at that point. And the third guy, the, the returning champion, was a dude named Suresh Krishnan. So, you know, high probability he didn't grow up reciting the Lord's Prayer. But on top of all of that, and this bit is important here, the Lord's Prayer doesn't actually matter to the overwhelming majority of people. What the fans were actually reeling from wasn't the ignorance of the Jeopardy contestants, who, to be clear, answered way fucking harder questions both before and after that. What they were reeling from was the fact that their religion has become so culturally irrelevant that a group of three intelligent people can go all the way through their formal education without ever needing to know their favorite magic spell. And that is actually worth celebrating. I mean, you know, look, I'd love to challenge all the people who are complaining about these dumbass Jeopardy contestants to answer literally any question at all about Hinduism or Islam or any religion that isn't their own. 
fuck, I'd love to hear him try to define the word hallowed on the spot, to be honest with you. And of course, as friend of the show and former Jeopardy champion Hemet Meadow points out, everybody has blind spots in their cultural knowledge. Given the nation's demographic shift away from Christianity, it's barely even surprising that one of those blind spots happened to be Christianity 101 for all three of these contestants. So as tempting as it might be to make fun of these people, I feel like atheism should be taking a victory lap right now. I mean, honestly, it would have been unthinkable for something like this to happen in like 1964 when Jeopardy first debuted. Right. Hell, that would have been only two years after the Supreme Court ruled mandatory prayer in school to be illegal. So it would have been basically like asking modern Americans about the opening line of the Pledge of Allegiance. In fact, it's possible that in 1964 censors literally wouldn't have let them ask that question because it assumed that every red blooded American didn't already know the Our Father. But in the intervening 60 years, our culture has evolved a lot. And it's evolved away from Christianity and it continues to evolve away from Christianity. And as it does, Christians will be outraged and flabbergasted and real again and again by just how little a person can know about their faith and still get by in this country. And we'll get to watch with ever more satisfaction as they slowly realize that we're getting our own daily bread. Nobody's delivering them from evil and thine kingdom ain't coming. They're talking about your Jesus. We interrupt this broadcast and bring you a special news bulletin. Joining me for headlines tonight are the radiation and conduction of my convection, Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick. Fellas, are y'all warmed up? I'm warming to it. He I said just realizing warmed. it's the same guy. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. It's a single entendre there. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> I had a week. Hey, podcast. Yeah, he was sir, off. He like doesn't this. toss these off the dome. There's a <laughs> He's <script>. fully rested <laughs> going into this one. It's actually, I don't know if it raises to the level of single entendre. It's, no, it's, not really. There's it's no entendre. zero there's level a, entendre. It's, it's, <laughs> like you can hear it. That's it's the French It's like an here. out tendre at yeah. this point. Yeah. <laughs> In our lead story tonight, bodily autonomy in the U.S. is once again under attack from that familiar group of black robed conservative, unelected policymakers with too much education to be this stupid. And I'm talking, of course, about the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops. Oh. Because who needs your own branch of government when you control something like one-fifth of every hospital bed in the U.S. and the law inexplicably allows you to deny medical treatment to people if your imagination insists on it. And, of course, the latest minority to find themselves in the USCCB's crosshairs are trans people, as the conference is poised to issue a new directive forbidding Catholic hospitals from providing any gender-affirming care to their patients. What the fuck? Okay, so we take all your hospitals now. We're taking them. Sure. If you have hospitals and you refuse some of the medicine, no, you don't. You don't have hospitals. (laughs) John Q, we're taking it. Yeah. (laughs) Just imagine declaring yourself a whites-only lunch counter in 2023 and thinking that's going to be looked on fondly by history. Right, yeah, (laughs) right, right. Now, of course, we've been warning of the dangers of this creeping Catholic dominion over the American healthcare system for a decade. They've long been an obstacle to reproductive rights by banning not just abortion, but like fucking contraception, tubal ligation, vasectomies, and in vitro fertilization, not to mention being the chief opposition to evolving our national attitudes towards end-of-life care. But despite their draconian opposition to anything remotely progressive, they hadn't gotten around to formally banning gender affirming care to this point, presumably because that would require admitting trans people exist. But according to the National Catholic Reporter, that's set to change this week when the group makes for their spring assembly. Oh, nice. Last time we wanted to get genocidal bigots all in the same room, we had to hold a whole Nuremberg trials about it. Right. Yeah. They did it for us. (laughs) Do you. Do you think they'll hang themselves? Too, I don't think or do we that have they to. Will. No, no, we got it. <laughs> okay. Make it easier. Half I feel later. like Mossad would help us hunt them at some <laughs> point. One hundred percent. Now, I, I I should note that they're only really going to be formalizing an existing policy here. Back in March, the USCCB issued a memo that called all gender affirming care quote injurious to true flourishing of the human spirit, end quote, and said that such interventions, quote, do not respect the fundamental order of the human person as an intrinsic unit of body and soul with a body that is sexually differentiated, end quote. What? I I think what they mean there is if a trans woman has bottom surgery, her spirit won't have anywhere to put its ghost dick. 
Oh, oh, okay. Now it makes a lot of sense. I have a great idea where to put it, though, now that I think about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But put yourself in a hospital administrator's shoes, right? You're dealing with funding and staffing. And you're desperate for resources. You're three years out from the start of the COVID pandemic. Yeah. And then you get an email from your boss's boss being like, hey, make sure you don't do any medicine that disrupts the soul. Okay? Right. Yes, <laughs> exactly. And, and by the way, while we're on the subject, I want to dismiss this common defense that you hear that somehow if it wasn't for Catholic hospitals, these areas would have no hospitals at all. Bullshit. Right. That may be true in some less economically developed country, but that's bullshit in America. They're almost exclusively buying existing hospitals, not building new ones. And regardless, those hospitals compete with secular hospitals for patients, employees, donations, volunteers, etc., Right. So it would be like saying that if there was no Walmart, people wouldn't be able to buy things. Catholic hospitals are not a humanitarian effort. They're whatever the fuck the opposite of that is. Uh, yeah. A religious institution. That, yeah. That's the <laughs> term I was looking for. Thank you. But all that's beside the point, because, look, if, if you need to, like, you know, take care of an ectopic pregnancy or you need a tubal ligation or you need gender affirming care, those places don't have hospitals now. Right. Yeah. Unless there's a big accident at the bishop convention. Nope, you can't say, say that. You just, don't, it's just, you're not saying You want to save lives or not? Oh, okay, okay. And in flout of the rules news. Fantastic. <laughs> the owners of Taqueria Garibaldi in Sacramento, California, are under investigation for wage theft. And they also tried to get their employees to keep quiet by finding out their mortal sins and using that as leverage. Yep. And uh, if that sounds like religion, yes, it does. And you're a step ahead of me. <laughs> the owners brought in a priest claiming to be offering, you know, free absolution as a workplace perk at the <laughs> restaurant. But the priest was actually just digging up dirt to use for blackmail. Oh, hey, guys, I, we uh, a little appreciation in the break room. Pizza? No, no, it's not pizza. <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> I mean, the, as I was reading about this, I, I, I kept getting surprised that the priest wasn't just like the boss in a white collar and a fake fucking mustache. That's exactly. how blatant this was. <laughs> or a god costume. Just yeah. hello, everyone. <laughs> it's oh, not oh, oh. clear that that's not what happened either. Do I, god says ho, 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 too, right, guys? Sure. Yes. Sure, definitely. They're all white guys. And a big <laughs> thanks to Stormy Decisis for the link scathingnews at gmail.com if you want to help out. Wait, 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 wait. Heath, are you mm. saying that not only can listeners send us the latest in religious bat shittery to scathingnews at gmail.com, but they can include one of their deepest sins in that email, and no matter how heinous what? it is, no. we'll forgive no. it? Oh, Jesus not, Christ. Do not <laughs> send us your sins in emails, please. Nope. nope. Unless they're, like, super funny. So, yeah, it all starts when the California Wage and Hour Department started looking into allegations of wage theft. I don't know the details of that, but I can almost guarantee it was in fact happening because that's yep, happening yeah. in almost every single restaurant in the country. Yeah, it, it's a restaurant. Yeah. yeah, especially when they have like the tip out system that essentially makes servers give away some of their tips to other employees rather than the restaurant paying everyone a reasonable wage. The tip out thing, it's usually said that it's oh, it's technically optional, but most employees don't know that. And either way they'd be punished for not going along with it. Yep. They'd be the assholes and they get bad shifts and all that stuff. The whole thing is a fucking scam. Yeah. If you pitched a tip out system to like 17th century sharecroppers, they'd be like, <laughs> no, nah, it seems a little bit much to me. Why man. don't you gonna... You'd be like, you should pay the hostess. Yeah. So to be clear, that's the legal stuff, right? Like you can pay your employees two thirteen an hour and then hope the customer makes up the shortfall with their generosity and then steal some of that generosity to compensate your underpaid fucking hostess. That's the standard. And these assholes were being investigated for falling below that standard. Yeah. Two thirteen an hour. That's like 15 or 20 states are at that point for tipped employees. And like mm -hmm. more than half are under $5 for tipped employees. Yeah. It's ridiculous. So on top of the... American restaurant industry in general, there's another scam happening here called magical confession or uh, Catholicism is the other way to say it. Yeah. But it's even worse than that. The owner was running a second level scam called 
magical confession that's actually a spy for management yes. or uh, Scientology, uh, you could call it, or uh, Mormonism or most of the other ones too, honestly. So instead of a normal confession where you tell the priest whatever you want, the priest was doing it more like an interrogation room. According to complaints by employees, the priest or very likely just some guy dressed up like a priest or the, you know, Santa guy that Eli was doing a second ago, they were asking if people ever got pulled over for speeding, if they ever were late to work, if they ever stole something from the workplace. And I'm sure that worked on some of the staff. They like said something honest and then were scared and they were able to be intimidated. But fortunately, a server named Maria Para was like, oh, you're you're a priest who wants to know about my personal collection of to-go ramekins? Really? You want the details? <laughs> you're a spy. You're so narc. You're a narc. Obviously, I'm telling the Department of Labor right now. <laughs> okay, but to be fair, I feel like if they really wanted to know the true depths of the amount people who work at restaurants steal, they're going to need someone way tougher, right? Like one of those kid fucking cover-up guys that get yeah, like right. like you need you need a ringer for that one. It's just all stealing, to be fair, at restaurants. We are all stealing <laughs> really? from you if yeah. we're employees at your restaurant, but deal with it. So so wait, so so these motherfuckers managed to be too corrupt to meet the American restaurant employment standard and the Catholic confessional <laughs> standard. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Yep. You guys want to get disqualified from a WWE match and earn the trifecta? <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> Well, good news in the end. The owners of the restaurant just got ordered to pay $140,000 to the employees as part of a settlement. So bottom line, big takeaway here. Don't talk to cops or priests or employers go. of restaurants, probably. Honestly. Or, or taqueria owners. And in incendiary rhetoric news. Nashville pastor and version of Vince McMahon you get when you're the second player to choose him in Smash Brothers, Kent Christmas <laughs> took to the pulpit to encourage Christians to be suicide bombers this week. What? Because Christians won't stop until hyperbole on our podcast is physically impossible, I guess. I just, I, wait, is he jealous that the Muslims are hogging all the best persecution? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> You're ahead of me, Noah. You are ahead of me. So yeah, regular listeners might remember Kent Christmas, who admittedly was doomed the moment he wasn't born as a talking toy reindeer for declaring back in May that in the eyes of God, Donald Trump was the president. Or you might remember him from a few weeks ago when he told his congregants that a new law in Virginia would make it legal to kill a baby up to 21 days after it was 21 born. days after. No, what? yeah, I heard about that. It's like uh, Try Before You Buy on Amazon. They're doing that in Virginia. <laughs> yeah, they use the same. For live children. They use the same envelopes. It's like they give you the first chapter for free kind of a thing. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you got to have your receipt, but like, yeah, that's yeah. what they're doing. <laughs> exactly. But here's what he had to say this week. Quote, you want to know why the Muslim faith has had its advancements? It's because the Muslims are willing to die for their beliefs. They're willing to strap bombs to their chest. They believed in the afterlife. God, give us some men and women that will get a hold of some passion in the spirit and say, I will lay down my life for the gospel. Oh, End look, quote. Okay, all, all right. So I'm not saying that it would be funny if somebody killed him right after he said that, right? That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> but I am saying if you were going to kill him anyway, that would have been the funniest time to do it, right? Can't that argue with that. Okay. That's true. I'm saying it would have been funny. The first <laughs> I'm officially saying The that. company, yeah, two thirds. <laughs> official stance of Puzzle and the It's objectively <laughs> hilarious. That just is. Exactly. A lot of the other times also funny. So like well, the, right, the relative yeah, thing no, that you were saying time, definitely would have been. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, yeah, it, it's pretty important to acknowledge a couple things about these statements here. First of all, they're super duper illegal, right? Like these mm -hmm. are very obviously textbook calls to violence and they are not protected by free speech. And two, in spite of the fact that lots of non-religious people have gone to jail for way less than this, absolutely nothing is going to happen to Kent Christmas as a result of this. Yes. Well, I mean except for another white Christian mass shooter, and then half the country will pretend he dropped out of the sky for no reason. Right. So. No, I, mm -hmm. I bet he'll have been picked on a lot at high school. Yeah. 
Okay, but if this guy was Muslim, if this was Kent Ramadan at a mosque instead of <laughs> Kent Christmas at a church, he's tackled by the FBI halfway through his first sentence. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Right away. Yeah. Shot by a drone before the tackle even. <laughs> exactly. They yeah. tackle a dead guy and they're like, oh, nice. You got, okay, you got it. <laughs> Excellent. Good, Good. Soft. And look, I point this out because it's easy to dismiss assholes like Kent Christmas as unfortunately named clowns. And- yeah, he is an unfortunately named clown, but he's also an extremely dangerous result of religious overreach in this country. People like Christmas are the foundation of white Christian terrorism. And the moment they can no longer preach battleground instructions from the pulpit without fear, the sooner we're going to be safer as a nation. And in God Hates Flags news. In 2015, advocates for cultural pluralism rejoiced as Hamtramck, Michigan, became the first community in the U.S. to elect a Muslim-majority city council. And now, eight years later, they're looking at an all-Muslim, all-male, all-conservative city council and realizing it's tied for least pluralistic city council on the entire goddamn planet, uh. and despite representing one of America's most culturally diverse cities. Needless to say, the mood is far less celebratory especially when said council does shit like they did last week and bans pride flags from being flown from city property. <sighs> ah, yeah. See, if it's important for pluralism for your group of people to get some but not too much representation, yeah. your thing is bad. Your you're doing thing it wrong. is a bad yep. thing. Uh, that, that also, you're... maybe focus up on a real issue like your city being called ham <laughs> Or whatever it is. <laughs> Hamtramck, yeah. It does sound like Heath challenged me in the moment to name a name, city. Name a city. <laughs> Hamtramck. That has a, a non-halal food built into it. Pam. <laughs> so, okay. So, so quick thanks to Eric for the link. Scathingnews at gmail.com. Sins. But yeah, to be clear, this isn't a ban on pride flags, like on private property, right? But, but since conservatives have turned, we think LGBTQ people should be able to openly participate in society back into a contentious fucking issue. The city council deemed that flying the flags on a public property counted as a political endorsement. And this, of course, stings all the more since it's coming from the last community whose participation in society conservatives turned back into a politically contentious issue. But yeah, according to a unanimous vote from the council, they're discontinuing the city's tradition of LGBTQ support. Yeah. And so if Christians and Muslims can like get past all their bigotry, they can really team up on doing all the other bigotry. That's what's yeah, right. happening yeah. here. It's terrifying. Yeah. Kumbaya and all that. Don't worry, everybody. We read this poem. It turns out the bigots are just going to come for the gays. It's going to yes. be great. <laughs> No, it's great. They come for the socialists and everything. Yeah, so. <laughs> but then they're done. So they do it first. And so done. Mayor Amir <laughs> Khalib, who who became America's first Yemeni American mayor in 2021, Yay! defended the board's decision by pointing out that the LGBTQ community didn't have to be so damn gay about it. Not yay. Right. Yeah. He's <laughs> quoted in The Guardian saying that he tries to govern fairly for everyone. But yeah, this is this is going great. But that LGBTQ supporters had stoked tension by, quote, Forcing their agenda on others, end quote. Uh, that, that, that agenda, to be clear, once again, is existing in society. Sure. Okay, but to be fair to the mayor, when your holy book demands throwing gay people off a tall roof, you can't have a flag. Probably feels like a compromise. No, that's right? true. Not, no, you're right. Like you're right. Now, I, I should be clear, this is not uniquely Muslim. Several towns in the U.S. have instituted similar bans. And in many ways, this one's only getting more traction in the media because it's a way for tepid liberals to reinforce this. You know, this is what you get for supporting multiculturalism rhetoric bullshit while ignoring the fact that it's also what you get for failing to support multiculturalism. But I wanted to highlight this story in particular as it's yet another reminder that religion is dangerous in direct proportion to how much power it wields. Yeah. This is uniquely religious, not Muslim, yep, but definitely sure uniquely religious. Fuck. Yep. And finally tonight, we have one of my favorite types of story. These are the best. It's about the magical consequences of having magical consequences and the very real consequences that happen while idiots are panicking about the fourth level magical consequences that they think are there. Um, religion is stupid is the other way to describe what I'm talking mm -hmm. about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The genre. <laughs> And the latest amazing example is the scandal that's rocking the Catholic Church of Kansas City <laughs> to its very <laughs> core. Somebody was using the wrong communion wine. <gasps> so now they have to figure out how much magic 
didn't happen. Like, like it's a rhesus unicorn with Ebola, but like the inverse. <laughs> of it. They're All tracking right, yeah, the yeah. lack of a rhesus unicorn without <laughs> Ebola, and they have to figure yeah. out where that didn't not happen. Also, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't this the second we used the wrong communion stuff story we've had in so many months? If if only they were as good at keeping track of their crackers as they are of their rapists. Am I right, everybody? Yeah. <laughs> so, and it's and it's worth reminding everyone, of course, that they didn't notice this because, like, you know, the magic didn't seem to be working very well, right? It's, <laughs> no. it's like it's like when the regulators <laughs> noticed that the sprayer was misaligned at the homeopathic medicine factory, and no <laughs> one ever noticed because like it doesn't make any fucking difference. That's nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the best. So. It all started when a priest in Kansas City told the new guy to go get a bunch of wine for communion. And the new guy priest went to a wine store wearing, I'm assuming, a priest outfit. And the wine store was like, nice, idiot with a big order. Love these. And the new guy got sold on one of the many delightful wineries of the American Dust Bowl. The bottle said <laughs> sacramental right on the label. So new guy priest was all good. But it turns out he wasn't because the rules <laughs> of magic wine that literally turns into the blood of a dead rabbi are very serious rules very serious of magic. Rules. The wine may not have any additives that don't occur naturally from the magical anaerobic fermentation of grapes, a chemical process that we totally understood 2,000 years ago. That's sure. a rule. <laughs> so the archdiocese in each region of the world has an official document with a list of approved local wineries and a very serious warning about how just saying sacramental on the label is not enough. Apparently, putting that label on is just a marketing strategy used by wineries to trick stupid noobs into making big orders for their church. And that's what happened because the new guy didn't read the fine print. Yeah, it feels weird to say this, but I'm pro-deceptive advertising in this case. Right? Yes. I will I will smuggle you wax seals of approval over a river at midnight wine company. <laughs> Just fucking go for it, guys. Go for it. Yeah. So nobody at the magical compliance department caught this big mistake and the Kansas City Archdiocese was supplying communion wine to its churches that was not capable of being zooped into rabbi blood every Sunday morning oh, by a priest. Oh, no. <laughs> and yeah, that kept happening for a while until somebody finally noticed last week and uh, immediately sounded a klaxon and picked up a red phone to the Vatican to report this terrifying <laughs> emergency. And ever since, priests have just been sprinting around their weird castles, making panicky phone calls to each other, trying to figure out how many people are now exposed to the hellfire of eternity because of the magic that they may have not received. <laughs> Bunch of priests calling everyone they know like they gave them the clap like Heath and Noah's old roommate. Just, <laughs> hey, <laughs> just, you got a second? D d d don't worry, Luke. We had several roommates at the time. He does. Nobody knows we're talking about you. That's <laughs> true. You're, right, you're good. It's true. So <laughs> here's, the, here's the letter that just got sent out by Archbishop Joseph F. Noman of the Kansas City Archdiocese. Quote, it has recently been reported by two priests having served in three different parishes that upon their appointment to these parishes, they soon discovered the long-term use of wines that were in fact invalid matter for the confection of the Eucharist. <gasps> the result of this long-term practice in these parishes is that for any number of years, all masses celebrated were invalid and therefore the intentions for which those masses were offered were not satisfied. This is a gravely serious situation for oh. which we must now petition the Holy See for guidance on restorative measures. Jesus. Okay. Imagine being a little old lady and you go up to heaven only for <laughs> Peter to be like, yeah, turns out you got to burn in fire forever because of a labeling error. This I should know. Be, it's not legally protected, it turns out. I know. So, uh. Perfect moral law, though, right? Anyways. <laughs> right, right. That's just the fucking rules. thing. In any world governed by logic, that letter ends with, this is a gravely serious situation because it forced us to realize for this to be possible, our religion is obviously bullshit and we're engaged <laughs> in a 112 generation scam. Yeah, <laughs> turns out it didn't end like that. No, it continued like this. It said... <laughs> Due to the grave nature of this situation, no. parishes must immediately discontinue use 
of all wines that have not been specifically produced to meet the requirements for sacramental usage. If upon checking the wine you currently use, you find that it is invalid matter, contains additives such as elderberry extract, sugars, alcohol, etc., you must notify Friar John Riley by June 15th. Gosh, your name will be kept confidential. I missed it. So that the true scope of the situation in this archdiocese may be reported properly. Thank you for your immediate attention to this very serious matter. Very, very serious. Very, <laughs> very, very serious. And hey, hey, podcast listener, I know that you can Google John Riley's Not Magic Wine Reporting Hotline, but please do not <laughs> call it to report the Bud Light in your fridge unless you're very serious and very concerned about your soul, okay? Yeah. I feel like we missed the deadline, but there's, it's probably still open. It's probably, they're probably still taking late calls. It's I love, his phone. I love I the checked. fact that they felt the need to say, and this isn't silly nonsense, three different times just in the part of the letter that you quote thrice. Here. And I did not yes. quote the whole thing, correct? <laughs> thrice during that little excerpt. Yes. yes. Real yep. karate. So yeah, that was for that guy's very real job as a fucking yes. archbishop or whatever that we subsidize with tax exemptions. Jeez. And this is all oh. happening because Catholics are fucking liars. They don't actually believe that shit. But now they're all playing this absurd game being like, yep, we definitely, yep, we all agree that only the real grape-based magic can make the Middle Eastern ghost blood that we need to forgive Dave from over by the strip mall outside of Kansas City for eating a burger on Friday. Yep. Everybody needs to respect our sincerely held beliefs that we're all not lying about. This is real. This right. Is yeah. Because if we don't take this seriously, we still have to follow laws. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. It sounds like a bunch of devout Catholics are hellbound. So I feel like our work is done for the night. Heath, Eli, thanks as always. Jumanji. And when we come back, Living Waters Ministry will ask why we have a problem with all lives mattering. A couple of weeks ago, we did an episode of God Awful Movies about a Ray Comfort video while Eli was on vacation, and I feel like that left a gibbety-sized hole in everyone's heart. So we decided to revisit <laughs> Ray at least a little bit, and this week's God Awful Mini. 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 So tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? We watched a video that's called Should Christians Support Black Lives Matter? Question mark. It's the story of what it means when that is an active question in your community. <laughs> yeah. That's we terrifying. watched White Splaining. The people demand. <laughs> and Eli, how bad was this mini? Well, if Ray Comfort's unrelated line of questions has always struck you like a bird on a bay window, but you want to see what happens when it's about a topic even he knows has nothing to do with his agenda. You will love this movie. Yeah. So is, is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best to be the worst at? Yeah, lots of possibilities here. I'm going to go with best, best passerby. Okay. Just at one little point during this, it's 20 Ooh. minutes, this stupid little video. He's out in California somewhere. For half a second, somebody clearly walked up to his shitty thing and was like, hey, Ray Comfort, fuck you and they had to beep it in the middle of the thing because they thought they were like this footage we're getting is so fucking amazing we can't get rid of we're not losing that right yeah we're right, keep this right. guy just being like fuck <laughs> face fuck you fuck you see when i saw best best passerby i thought you meant aisha but we'll get to her we'll get to her so i was gonna go with best worst revisionist subtitles did either of you guys watch this with the subtitles on yes it was so, like, like, so the concepts agree, but the words were completely fucking different. It's like one of those things where you like, if, if you auto translate English to Dutch, to Chinese, to Swedish, and then back to English, it was like that. Yeah, yeah exactly. I actually had my subtitles for some reason set to Chinese when I turned it on. Yeah, well, that's because Eli gave us the link for, yeah. It went uh, default to that. Yeah. But then I, I switched it back to English and the English closed captioning had a lot of trouble it was doing like phonetically what Ray Comfort was saying a lot of the time. Yes. Oh, interesting. So water was like W-A-H-T-A-U-H. <laughs> yes, constantly. <laughs> yes. I'm going to go with best worst preaching to Christians uh -huh. because two, not one, two of the people they're doing their spiel on are like, I'm a Christian. And they're like, yeah, but are you? And he's like, I'm your brand of Christian. And he's like, oh, but these 
There's still yeah. four questions left. Yeah, there. right. <laughs> exactly. I haven't even got to the are you a good person bit yet. Hold on. My, my dog is wearing sunglasses. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. My flow chart doesn't have nose yet. It doesn't have a new. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get through it. All right. So, yeah. So now Ray Comfort's in this, but he's not the main narrator about this one, right? So we're going to start off with the main narrator basically going like, so yeah, have, have you heard about this new Black Lives Mattering? Have you seen this? Huh? Huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then cut straight to a woman, a, a black woman in a car screaming murder and do, like, yes. being scary to Ray Comfort somehow. <laughs> yep. Now, of course, this narrator is Easy Zwayne. That's Ray Comfort's black friend, no matter how many times Easy explains that he isn't black, right? Yes. They put him in a hoodie. <laughs> they put him in a hoodie. This guy has worn a suit in every yes. film we've <laughs> ever watched him in. And Ray came up to him just with it stretched out. Huh? You know, for the kids? <laughs> for the kids? <laughs> So, yeah, but they explained to us that there's a difference between the slogan Black Lives Matter and the organization Black Lives Matter. Yeah, they want to be very clear. They do not hate <laughs> black people. They hate the organization that fights for their rights. To right, live. Exactly. They hate them <laughs> having rights. Yes. So now he's going he's to do some man on the street stuff. We're going to start with some Trump supporters. <laughs> and we're going to enter into the, the longest running theme of this video is trying to get Jamie to say anything that isn't terrible, right? Like the, he's got this one Trump supporter lady and he, the very first thing we hear from her is he goes, so do you believe racism is a reality? This is a person of color asking her. She goes, no, <laughs> no. And they never revisit it. She's nope. just like, yep. No such thing as racism. And they're like, well, I'm Ray Comfort and Fuck. I can't edit around that. This flowchart so. does not have any of the things you say. I guess we cut and keep that. She's just over there slamming her bat into the ground next to the T-ball. I don't know how to count this. I don't know yes. really what is this. <laughs> we also see this this white guy who's going to explain, or I'm sorry, white explain the proper way to express yourself to to the blacks. Right. It's another one of the talking heads. This is terrifying. Yeah. He's literally saying like, OK, no, I like them mattering, I guess. But they're <laughs> saying it wrong. They're saying it. They don't know yes. how to express their lives mattering correctly. They're not asking nice enough. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. For their lives. <sighs> so we cut to Huntington Beach. Easy tells us he's like everybody's going crazy over this whole Black Lives Mattering thing. And then but meanwhile, like we're. He's at a protest and everyone is so fucking sedate. Okay. Right. He's like, everybody's going crazy. I'm like, no, they're not. We see them. It's so crazy. They're right there. He's at a Black Lives Matter across the street protest and a Trump yes. on this side of the street protest. And he's like, so it's Black Lives Matter versus uh, Trump, I guess. Tough call. <laughs> I'm an evangelical <laughs> Christian. What side do I pick? I'm I'm literally on the Trump side right now, as you can see. Yeah, it's, it's real hard to sell this as a uh, and it's a, lo it's a long light. It is a long light. <laughs> <laughs> and then to wrap this segment up, he goes, "I'm gonna try and bring him the gospel if I survive." All right, all if I survive, all the African Americans over there, maybe we'll make some Christians. Yeah, exactly. And then we we cut to Ray. Ray's in the fucking movie. And he's got a microphone set up. He's asking some randos about Black Lives Matter. This is where we meet the blonde guy from earlier, right? This is where we like a first officially introduce White's Blaine Longboard. Yeah, I yeah. Yes. White's Blaine yes. Longboard. Yes. And his uh, very angry sidekick, Andrew Tate, in real life, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> That's the guy. <laughs> Andrew Tate, actually. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. He says he likes Black Lives Matter, but he doesn't like the way it puts everybody in the same bucket. Which bucket is that? The one where we all have to support Black Lives Mattering. Yeah, yeah, that's actually the point that this guy is making. And they put him on fucking camera to say it. That the problem yep. is that BLM wants everyone to think Black Lives Matter. And he's like, yes. really? Everyone? Same bucket on that lives thing? Really? Yes. He says everyone has to believe Black Lives Matter or else. And I wrote in my notes, or else what? Yeah, right. <laughs> or else what? And we're also going to meet here the, the other person that's going to talk with Ray on, on his microphones, Aisha. And I have a hard time. So there's Aisha and then there's the guy with the mask that's actually in the middle of the protest. Like between the two of them, I can't decide. But one of them wins Ray Comfort video better than anyone has ever won Ray Comfort video. They have yeah. all amazing answers to everything. And he keeps being like, 
fuck. My floats yeah. are killing me. Everybody's <laughs> killing me on this. Now, I would like to nominate Aisha as my favorite. Not because of anything she says, but because of... Street Fighter 2 shirt? No, Street Fighter 2 shirt is good. Yeah, But there is. is one thing more excellent than her Street Fighter 2 shirt. Her hat? And it is the liquid hatred with which her baby is staring yes. oh, okay. yes. at Ray Comfort. <laughs> her baby is... Uh, Tim, if you want to... The best. If you want to dip into the notes here, I have included a screenshot of how her baby looked at Ray Comfort throughout <laughs> this interaction. <laughs> Feel free to share that with the listeners at home. So, but yeah, and we, we watch her and then we watch this kid. They, they found this like a 17 year old kid that answers every question perfectly. I feel like they were just like desperately seeking any inarticulate people to speak on behalf of BLM and they just couldn't find couldn't, one. Couldn't find their it. best. No, it sucked. This guy was one of my favorites because he's like, you really don't understand why it's dumb to say all lives matter as like a counter argument to the, I, I think you're lying. Yeah. I think you're lying about that. You do understand why that's dumb. Yeah. Cut. Cut. Yeah. <laughs> but then Easy is going to tell us the real values of Black Lives Matter, right? And he starts off with this thing about how they want to challenge the nuclear family. Yeah. But now, the, the movie presents this as a fucking jump scare. They literally make the words disrupt nuclear family scarily float out from the quote yes. to conveniently cover up the other words of the quote. Well, right, because what the other words are basically saying is like we should take care of people rather than assuming that every family can handle their own shit, right? That's what the statement is, yeah. but they like put disrupt really big and cover all the yeah. good stuff up. And in that sense, we absolutely should disrupt the nuclear family and have communities that support each other. That's good. Yes. That's a good idea. Absolutely. Objectively good idea. But then EZ comes back and says, but the nuclear family isn't some Western prescribed things. It was God prescribed according to strictly Western conceptions of God. <laughs> yeah. I, which and that is so funny because God's conceptions of the family are wildly un-Western, according to Reka. Like, oh, yeah, no, it's a man, a woman and you're brother's widow and a yeah, right, and your concubines. You a yeah, exactly. child <laughs> and a black guy who gets up after 48 hours. It's okay. very, God's laid it out very clearly what the family is. I love there's this great moment where Ray Comfort says to Aisha, she's like, so he's like, well, what do you think's wrong with humanity? And I'm like, say you, please. I will give you $150 to just say you. You are what's right. <laughs> but she doesn't. <laughs> She, she basically, she goes with lack of empathy, right? Like, which is what almost everybody says. You know, what's the problem? It's like, you know, people just not being empathetic. And he's like, no, no, not being my religion, actually. He says, he says, we trod loving people in the 60s. And that what? Martin Luther King was all talking. You see Aisha's face change. And he's like, you cut. <laughs> I, I know for a fact that he cut and just lifted up a dog wearing sunglasses was like, you can't punch me. I'm holding a dog. <laughs> you wouldn't punch a dog in glasses, would you? <laughs> but you watch her be like, no, 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 continue your thought. And he does a little bit more. And he's like, no, MLK had a dream, but it didn't work because he died. I don't, I like civil rights leaders who don't die. Uh, yes. I don't know what to say next. Yes. And he actually says things got worse since the 60s. Yes. What? Yeah, like a vis a vis race relations. Things have gotten worse since the 60s, according to his fucking telling. Really? I just love, he's like, you know, we tried loving people in the 60s and that didn't work. It's like, oh, have we tried Christianity before, Ray? Has your thing, your thing failed in the actual 60s, not the 1960s, just the <laughs> zero, zero 60s, and you're still fucking doing it. Yeah. This is when he, he he cuts to another guy and he's like, solve racism now. Go. Yes! Too slow. And the guy's like, what the fuck are you talking about? So stupid. Well, he basically, he's like, you know, hey, so solve racism in 10 words or less. And the kid's like, fuck, man, um, empathy and not being an uptight dick when people point out how harmful your behavior is. He's like, nope, 16 words. You did good, but that's 16. <laughs> Debate Robert Kennedy Jr. or Black Lives Don't Matter. Do it right now. $100,000. <laughs> <laughs> so then, so easy cuts in with another core value, which is that Black Lives Matter fosters a queer affirming network, dot, dot, dot. Don't worry, queer affirming is going to grow to, cover the entire screen and <laughs> just the way Disrupt did earlier. I literally wrote in my notes, affirming, affirming, affirming. <laughs> Black Lives Matter is also against this other type of bigotry. And this movie is being like, suspect. What's that other one? What are they doing? Yes. As a Christian, you got to ask yourself, are we letting the minorities intersect like that? I feel right. like that's scary for us, right? Yes. 
Yeah, the quote says that they're against heteronormative thinking. And he's like, see, they're against heterosexuals. <laughs> they hate <laughs> straight people. <laughs> yeah. And then he does this great yada, yada, yada. He's like, and look, of course, the Bible says to treat homosexuals with love and respect and dignity. And I was like, hey, 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 whoa, let me stop you right there. Yeah, nope. right. Does it, though? So it's the opposite. Well, but then and then the last half of that sentence fails to treat LGBTQ people <laughs> with respect or dignity. I'd love for black lives to matter. But if gay lives are mattering, too, I don't know. I just I I can't yeah, <laughs> square the circle on this. Really? Yeah. yeah, that's the point they make here. Yep. And then we cut back to there's this non-Ray white guy. And he's the worst. Like, he's the fucking worst. In a video with EZ Zwayne and Ray Comfort, he's the fucking worst. He was the one willing to ask this question. <laughs> That's yeah. why he's in the video. This is the president of Living Waters, the stupid fucking ministry. Oh, is he? Of course it is. Yeah. Oh, God, this guy is fucking... He, so he's asking an African-American how that guy would react if he identified as a black person. A white guy walks up to a black yep. guy and says that. He says, what if I told you that I identify as a black person? I was like, please say Black Lives Matter a bit less. Please, yes. please respond <laughs> with slightly less now. What's amazing is nobody falls for his stupid trap. Nope. He's like, what if I said I'm black? And he'd be like, yeah, a lot of people who don't look black identify as black. And he was like, what? <laughs> well, and then he's like, what if I said I was a woman? And the guy's like, how could that possibly affect me? Right. And the guy's like, OK, all right. All right. What if I identified as your daughter and said you owed me child support? And I'm like, well, see, now it affects him. That's the difference, you fucking idiot. Right. And what's so amazing is that in his desperate third gamble, he accidentally makes a point for our side. Right. Because we tell adopted families that their kids are their children all the time. Sure. Because yeah. family is a construct. Right. But he's an idiot who doesn't realize <laughs> that. So he's like, yeah, it's like a lot of the things that are very important to us are malleable based on culture. Oh, God damn it. I'm the bad guy. <laughs> I disprove my religion again. Fuck, oh. I keep doing this. <laughs> Ray, I got to put a dollar in the jar. Nope, this is a big one. Full dollar. Yep. Full yep. dollar. I did it on Ray, camera. I need, the I need the flow chart back, man. Yeah. And then they have to explain what a bunch of fucking commies BLM are, right? He goes, according to the New York Post, and I'm like, hey, well, that's uh, your first problem. Gonna right stop there. you right there. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter what you're saying, expert. Yeah, much. right. I'm sorry, are the alliteration experts about who or who is not a pedo at the New York Post not your number one source <laughs> when vetting? <laughs> I will say the quote that they have from the New York Post, very mysterious ellipses right in the middle of that <laughs> quote. But it's about how, like, you know, the, the BLM supports Marxism. And fucking Easy Swain comes in with one of the stupidest cell phones I've ever seen. He's like, well, Marx believes that money was the root of all evil. Mm -hmm. That's the apostle fucking Paul, you <laughs> idiot. That's the yep, guy who literally. invented your fucking religion who said that. Yeah, apparently Jesus, though, Jesus was a strict Smithian neoliberal capitalist though, in yeah. the Gospels, I think. So, yeah, Paul said that, but Jesus was like, yeah, super... He says, that's dangerous. I'm like, that's the only non-dangerous part of your fucking religion, you idiot. The only way this scene gets better is if like in Annie Hall, the, Paul turns around and is like, hello, I am Paul the Apostle. Yeah, right. You know nothing of my work. <laughs> so. And then he uses the opiate of the masses quote, which, by the way, he actually does the right quote instead of the wrong quote, which is what I just said Yes, to you. he does the long version with the drum solo and everything. That was nice. Right, but his, but his answer is, we like our opium just fine. Thank you. Well, <laughs> right, right. So he's like, well, you know, Marx said that if you destroy religion, then society would be happy. So they're coming after your religion. Right. OK, but it would, though. Like well, we have a whole bunch of data. <laughs> so yeah, shows, like the less religious societies are happier. But he also has the cause and effect wrong, right? Because what Marx said is that if you make society fair and equitable, religion will abolish itself. Like the reason for religion would go away, which is what the data show, right? Right. So okay, so we got some more man on the street stuff with Easy. We we go back to the Trump supporter lady, who is by far the worst person that they managed to find, other than like one another you know the president of living waters i guess was the worst but this is the best because we watch two crazy people who are just stains on society both being like ugh, this one yeah, I'm, just, right. I'm just like it's like when your worst friend gets a terrible girlfriend and you're like good for them 
good for them taking themselves out of the dating pool. And just, yeah, right. <laughs> in the moment that EZ was talking to Jamie, neither EZ nor Jamie was talking to anyone else. And that's a net good for the yeah, world. Right, right. No, it was honestly, it was watching these two like slowly realize that they were meant for each other. That gave me the idea for the two quote quote Cupid joke that I used at the top <laughs> of the <this> show. <laughs> so. So now easy. So there's this one guy that's like, I, I don't know. I, I, I guess he's not ranking the races. It really sounds like he's because he goes like every race. And then he lists in his mind all the races. Right. They asked this guy about George Floyd. Oh, wait, this is the guy. This is clearly a guy where they were like, hmm, what race is that guy? Not white. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He, he could be you, sir. <laughs> sir, you're like. You're like a few clicks into my paint chips thing that I have. Um, <laughs> you think BLM is dumb, though, right? As a Trump person? Yeah, right. And, and yes. yeah, they found uh, on the MAGA side, they found a Republican guy who's not white. Great. Yes. Yeah. They asked him what he thought when he watched the video of George Floyd being murdered. And this is his answer. If I may quote. It kind of sucks to see colored folks to get sometimes <sighs> targeted by law enforcement. Kind of sucks. Let's we'll, 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 we'll move past colored folks as his fucking descriptor, <laughs> but kind of sucks. That was your answer to what did you think when you watched the fucking George yeah. Floyd video? This kind of sucks. If you watch that video, you hear George <laughs> Floyd being like, this is a bummer. This is a real <laughs> What, what, what do I think bummer. of this video of another human being being killed by the state? I would say it is not cash money. Yeah, not so, particularly cash money. Yeah. So Easy's like, so you're Latino, right? And the guy's like, like my, like half, half. And then Easy's like, have you ever experienced racism? He's like, I'm experiencing racism right now. Asshole. Right now, when you ask, I can hear you mouthing semi rune. You didn't say it out loud, but when I said half Latino, you were like semi rune. <laughs> So, yeah, so then the, the president of Living Waters comes up to explain the whole George Floyd kerfuffle to us. Right. But what he like the explanation that he uses here is that you'd have to be a Christian to think that murdering George Floyd was bad in the first place. Yeah. He says atheists applaud such a deed and then provides no evidence for why he says that. Right. Yeah. And I'm like, so it's so weird that you couldn't find any of the atheists at the Black Lives Don't Matter protest. You were just at, asshole. <laughs> right. And to be clear, though, he was saying George Floyd getting killed was bad. We know that only because God told us. And he says that proudly. And yeah. I was like, you you see how that's worse. Right? You made it worse. Right. Yeah, right? You get bad, that. Right. <laughs> really? Yeah. He's like, you know, what makes George Floyd's life valuable? The first in the first place, it's that he was created in the image of God. And you're, I'm like, so it's the basic body plan in your mind <laughs> is the reason. <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude. And then we, we cut back to easy, desperately trying to mine some semblance of empathy out of Jamie. Yeah. And this is so fucking belabored. He's like, OK, there's. A police, I'm trying to get to Jesus. Wait a second. There's a police officer and then there's a a, jo a boy having his sneakers stolen is the metaphor I've come up with. Are those two people related? No. No, and the cop then, is the son. The son is the cop's son is the guy with the, the sneakers. Wait, He's from his first son. wife or is it? No, it's wait, so but they go around Step the corner son. so he can't see them. But he knows. Oh, how would he know? I guess. Yells. Are you a good person? <laughs> oh, it's so, right. Because the whole time we're going like, where are you going with this? Easy. It's got all of the fucking pointless details of a six year old's joke. You're like, where is this going? And then he just cuts off and never goes back to it. He, it's so long. It's like minutes long. And finally, all he did was say, can the cop stop the robbery of the child? Like what? argument was he winning in his head because obviously no th this crazy person agrees with him like yeah stop the robbery and he's like exactly stop the robbery anyway are you a good person that literally goes exactly like that i look i wrote in my nose okay so wait so are we stealing jesus's shoes is that the analogy <laughs> i don't know what's going on here <laughs> He goes, well, why would it be wrong to rape somebody? He goes, well, because, you know, that it would be done with the intent to harm another person. He's like, I agree with you, but why would it be wrong? I'm like, how do you think that why works, 
dude. Hey, hey man, <laughs> it sounds like you're trying to work out your stance on black lives and rape. I'm just going to let you meditate because I don't <laughs> think <laughs> you... I want to so, help you with that. Or, or, do you, you want me know. to step I don't up think you him? should be around others. I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> right, and to be clear, but let's be very clear because his... His answer to that question is because God says rape is wrong, which A, no, he fucking doesn't. No. Nope. And B, implies that if God did not say rape is wrong, then rape would be totally fine. Yes. Right. Yeah. And, and, and then like we get the guy, like he's telling the one guy, he's like, now do you understand you're a liar and a thief and all that. That means you're going to hell. And you, the guy's got this like, yeah, look how visibly scared I am. Look on his face. That's absolutely oh. priceless. He's like, are you taking this seriously? Oh yeah. No, I'm taking it very seriously. Very seriously. He doesn't have the heart for it. The, the African American gentleman they have who has the tattoo of, he's like, so you're, um, you're a lying. Thief, right? You're a lying thief. And he's like, what? <laughs> what? Sorry, just get a little closer to me as you say that. And he's like, I just wanted to get you... Um, I didn't want to be within your reach. Um, Ray, <laughs> Ray does a big circle and everyone stands at two mics and I realize why he does that now. Yeah. <laughs> you see the onrushing person. <laughs> we cut to Aisha is agreeing with Ray so hard it fucks his whole thing up. She's like, no, I already know this. I am. Your, I share your religion, though. Right. Yeah. So. <laughs> but have you ever, have you ever had lust in your heart? Yeah. And then I was forgiven by Jesus. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh yeah. You no, were. God damn it. <laughs> My dog has sunglasses. <laughs> <laughs> the camera. Every time she she deflects him, the camera just pans down to the dog in sunglasses, as if to say, shush, shush, shush. jingly <laughs> fucking keys. Yes. Jingly dog in sunglasses. Yes. <laughs> I love that she starts trying to roll her bike away like a hundred times during this yes. little exchange being like, yep. all right. Oh, it's getting late. I'm pretty well, tired. <laughs> Man, I'm well, yeah, you. right, right. Dusty trail. Mm. <laughs> this is where he uses an, his analogy of different colored sheep. <laughs> okay. I don't even understand <laughs> what was the attempt here. He's like, so imagine a white sheep, right? Nope. Look at it now with snow behind it. It's actually a light-skinned colored sheep. You get it? It's, <laughs> it's not as delightsome as you thought it was. And, it? and Jamie was like, yeah, I totally get it. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Racially, right? And he's like, no, no, no. Okay. No, no, no. That's no, 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 no. I get my whole video is about that, but not right now. I'm doing a metaphor. No, so we're going to do it. It's like not white enough. I, that's bad. Yes. Yeah, so. And then Easy wraps it up with the obvious closing question. He's like, do Black Lives Matter? He's like, of course they do. And of course they should. And I wrote in my notes, bet you don't end the sentence there. He goes, but. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, man, I said but. <laughs> so, yeah. And then the very last line in there, he's like, they're pitching us on liking and subscribing. And they're like, help us keep making videos of this caliber. I'm like, this is, dude, this is the lowest of the calibers. I'm sorry to say. <laughs> hey, I'll take your money and help you make videos of more caliber like this. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm dying to know whether Ray thinks a mind really is a terrible thing to waste, but I guess we're going to have to find that out on the next God Awful Mini. Before we tighten the bolts on this one tonight, I want to remind you that there are still general admission tickets available to see God Awful Movies live in Detroit on July 22nd at the beautiful Garden Theater. Check the show notes or go to godawfulmoviesLive.com for details. Anyway, that's all the blast we've got for you tonight. We'll be back in 10,022 minutes with more. If you can't wait that long, be on the lookout for a brand new episode of our sister show's hot friend God Awful Movies debuting at 7 Eastern on Tuesday and an even newer episode of our half sister show citation data debuting at noon Eastern on Wednesday. Obviously, I couldn't hold my head high in a crowd. I've been neglected to thank Heath Enright for bringing the heat, Eli Brosnick for bringing the cool, and Lucinda delusions for bringing the just right. I also want to thank Morgan for providing this week's Farnsworth quote. She said it all the hell way back in October of last year, so I feel like the intended prank war quality might have been missed, but if not, I'm delighted that your friend that introduced you to our shows learned about it in this episode, and sorry we didn't get to you sooner. But most of all, of course, I want to thank this week's best bipeds, Kirsten L., Keith, Casey, Devin, Jen, Cheryl, Eric, the bald primate, and Cassandra. 
Kirsten, Eli, Keith, and Casey are too sexy to do a little turn on the catwalk. Devin, Jen, and Cheryl, who are so hot the thermometer melted. And Eric, the bald primate, and Cassandra, whose thoughts are so deep you could lose a submersible in them. Together, these ten delightful dudes, dudettes, and days devoted a dollop of dollars to discouraging deistic douchebaggery this week by giving us money. Not everybody has the heroic qualities it takes to give us money, but if you think you're up to the challenge, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash scathingatheist, whereby you own early access to an extended ad-free version of every episode, or you can make a one-time donation by clicking on the donate button on the right side of the homepage at scathingatheist.com. And if you'd like to help, but not in a money kind of way, you can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review, telling a friend about the show, and following us on social media. And speaking of social media, Tim Robertson handles that for us, and our audio engineer is Morgan Clark, who also wrote all the music that was used in this episode, which was used with permission. If you have questions, comments, or death threats, you'll find all the contact info on the contact page at scathingatheist.com. If you need to get money out of a child, Eli's the guy to call. Yeah, right, sure. right. No. <laughs> the preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2023. All rights reserved.